probably just popping in and out, enjoying the forests at will, but that it does not actually reside on this planet um, because there would be some accumulated evidence of such uh, based on how many people are out there in search of it. Um, my favorite T-shirt uh, has a picture of Bigfoot on it with a mountain range behind it, and it says Bigfoot saw me and no one believes him. Um, and uh, you know because I have not seen this with my own eyes uh, unlike so many other things that I have um, I you know I cannot say for certain whether it exists or not but I will say this anything is possible and the way that we should live our lives is with that assumption and also with the assumption that we know nothing compared with what there is to know. It's the safest assumption to begin with, that we are totally ignorant of our existence, of our, our place in the world and our world's place in the universe compared with the information that there is to know. We are babies being spoon-fed pablum. We are just now beginning to understand the depth and breadth of human consciousness. We are just beginning to understand and extrapolate the interconnectivity of energy. Um, you know, it, it took, I mean, Einstein lived in the last century. In the last century developed the theory of E equals MC squared, the whole notion of physics, mass, and energy, um, and how, uh, you know, his theory is that and all energy uh, exists, it cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, it can only be transformed. Um, and I'm, I'm running with that. That is the only thing that makes any sense to me. But anybody, and I'll say this to all of your listeners, if you come across anybody in this field that says they've got all the answers, that they know <laughs> everything about, run, don't walk, run, run, run. in the yes. opposite direction because that person yeah. is a fraud. Right. If my family doesn't have the answers to all these questions, there isn't anybody on this planet that does. No one. I have to agree. Absolutely. Um, and, and I do uh, agree with your outlook on things um, because this world, even the world is in itself is changing and there's no way that we can even accumulate the knowledge of now, not to mention mm -hmm. what's to come in the future. Or, right. even or all that has transpired in the past. In the past. Exactly. We know a fraction of it. You know, mm -hmm. there isn't a place that you can stand on this planet that hasn't seen countless deaths have occurred on it. Um, right. You know, it's like people, people just blow my mind. They're like, oh, let's, you know, take a field trip and go to this, you know, haunted location. You know, if you want to if if you want to investigate the existence of ghosts and spirits and you know other entities or interdimensional uh manifestations, you can do it right where you are at any given moment. You don't have to go someplace to do it. In the same way that if you want to connect with extraterrestrials, all you need to do is walk outside and look up. You don't have to go any place to have that connection. It's all around you happening simultaneously all over the planet. Mm. And I don't understand why people think that some special kind of trip has to happen in <laughs> order to have that connection when we already have that connection. We just have to open our minds to it. It already exists in consciousness. It exists, it exists in the collective 
consciousness, the divine mind, the one, O-N-E. Everything is one thing. Everything is existence. Everything is energy. There is nothing that is disconnected from anything else. And once you start looking big picture at the world and the universe in which we reside, it makes a lot more sense if you think of it in terms of all existence being a singular existence and all of us are the moving parts of it. Hmm. Yeah. That's heavy. <laughs> that really is <laughs> heavy. Um, Mary, yes. do you think that the brown mountain lights could be um, extraterrestrial or, or energies that's, that's just accumulated in that area from visitors? I, I mean, what do you think? Um, I think it could be extraterrestrial. I mean, what we saw that night was like unexplainable. And, you know, we were totally in awe by it. So uh, I'm, I just don't think it's any kind of residual kind of energy. It's very active energy. And um, I do. I believe it. not only what we saw on the ridge, but overhead, there was just like things that were unexplainable. You know, there were things that were not airplanes. They were moving in, in strange patterns. And um, I just think it was. I mean, we were totally in awe. Aren't they beautiful? I think they're so beautiful. They are. I mean, I, I mean, get so, I turn into a five-year-old every time I, I have a sighting of a vessel or multiple vessels. I, you know, I stop being an adult. I go back to, <laughs> you know, the wide-eyed wonder of childhood, seeing something. It's, it's always like I'm seeing it for the first time. You know, and it doesn't matter. I've seen a wide variety of vessels. There are many different vessels out there. I've seen, you know, I've had close encounters of a, a wide variety of close encounters. And every one is more exciting than the last to me. To me, it's it's a celebration. It's It's the reason I get up in the morning. It's what I love to do. It's why I'm here. I'm convinced of it. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I don't understand why anybody's afraid of it. You know, I, I try to, I try to understand fear, but because I don't have it, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around it, you know? Um, and I just do my work to help people dispel that fear and to make that connection. If it's something that they yearn to have. So hold on just a second. Bon Bon, hush, mommy's on the phone. Cat's just like, I don't know, she's staring in the corner of the room, just crying at nothing. And, you know, I just like, <laughs> here we go again. The cats see everything before the people do. Okay. Uh, yeah. They really do. My cats do. Oh, they really do. do. My cats do. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll yeah. look at my cat and she'll be staring at something and I'll be afraid to turn around. Because I'll think there's somebody there. <laughs> well, because there's somebody there. Yeah. <laughs> Especially they, if you, you know, know they don't me. have any filters. They don't. They don't have no. filters the way that we do. They don't filter stuff out because they, they don't want to deal with it. They just, they live existentially. They live in the moment and they just see what they see and then respond to it. You know, right. that was when I first determined the animal spirits exist as well because our animals at the farm were constantly, you know, rearing up and buzzing up and, you know, hissing and running and hiding <laughs> and, you know, reacting to something that they witnessed that we didn't see. You know, so it was, um, yeah, it didn't take long to figure out that they were very uncomfortable in that house. Um, and in fact, we had one dog that wouldn't even walk in the front hallway in front of the cellar door. She just simply would not. She would rather go outside in 20 below zero weather and walk around the entire length of the farmhouse and come in the kitchen door rather than walk through the warm front foyer and have to go past that cellar door. You wow. know, so, you know, we've had, uh, 
yeah, I learned a long time ago that animals are way more interconnected than we are. You know, they have so much to teach us. We just need to pay attention. You know, we just need to learn from them. And the only way that we can learn from them is to pay attention to what they're responding to and, and how they're reacting to their world around them, which includes us, but it includes a lot more than us. I right. remember um, one night, my dog, Grace, may she rest in peace. Um, she, we had a, a visitation in the house uh, and my mom and I both felt it simultaneously. And we smelled um, uh, a cologne in the house that um, we hadn't uh, caught a scent of for many, many years. And it was the cologne that our friend Sam Olufsen always wore. And suddenly we looked across the parlor and, and uh, there was a depression in, the, uh, in one of the old chairs that we had in the room at the time. And as we watched the seat kind of depress, mom looked at me and I looked at her and she looked across the room and she said, hi, Sammy. And mm -hmm. Grace jumped down off the couch and she went over and sat in front of the chair and lowered her head to be pet. Aww. Whoa. Yeah. That's yeah. great. No. Yep. I know. Awesome. And I mean, I got like a thousand more stories like that, you know, so I guess we'll have to reschedule for another time and just pick up where we left off because we really <laughs> just scratched the surface tonight. There's so that, much more to discuss. That would be awesome. We can do that. <laughs> great. Okay. I'll come back. Yep. I swear to God, I will. Bond on. Hold on, oh, hold on. Good honey. That. Relax, sweetheart. It's okay. Here, take your sponge ball. Here, go play with the ball. There you go. Oh, well, God, I love them all. I love animals so much. I mean, they're <laughs> such a huge part of my life. And uh, it's, uh, I, I love to interact with them and see what I can pick up in terms of the energies around them because they really are phenomenal creatures. I think it was uh, Chief Daniel. Uh, who said every animal is smarter than we are. <laughs> yes, it's true. Every single one, including the insects, because they're more connected. You know, we've somehow disattached from our own environment. You know, we live in huge cities where, you know, we barely see a leaf of grass or a tree. Uh, we just live in boxes piled on top of each other. You know, many, many countless millions of people do. And right. because they've severed their attachment and their interaction with nature, they have denied themselves um, that contact with source. You know, this is a living, breathing entity. It's not just a rock hurling through space. The, you know, the earth is alive and we're part of it and we can either learn to cherish and adore and worship and nurture and love our mother Gaia or we can persist in destroying our mother, killing her. Well, she's going to survive, folks, because this is how smart this planet is. It will wipe us off of it to preserve itself. It will perceive us as the pestilence upon it, and it will find a way to wipe us off of it. So if we don't learn the hard lesson of preserving and not fouling our own nest, and if we don't learn it soon, God help the generations that will come after us we will have left them nothing of any beauty or any treasure because we ha will have just totally trashed the only home we have. Agreed. Um, that's yep. happening every day. I yep. see things on, so on TV. That's, we have some, yep. we I have know, some I, weather changes. You know, and, I know. Well, the climate deniers can deny and deny and deny all they want, but the scientific evidence is evidence, uh, and it's irrefutable evidence, and it has been compiled 
for close to 100 years of record keeping. And there are uh, far too many uh, well-documented 